So now, with that in our heads, now we're ready to differentiate this guy. Now consider, so we can write this underneath, you can rule off if you like. <coughs> if you put it in the exponential, you're also just making another pocket mm. dimension. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like, yeah, like babushka dolls, sort of. It is. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> what? Okay, alright. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and work out how to differentiate this thing. Okay? But I need to change its form into something that can talk in ease, if that makes sense. Because I know how to deal with ease. I don't know how to deal with these other numbers. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, if y equals a to the x, y equals a to the x, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that a with this. Okay, I'm going to use this result we just proved. Okay, so instead of writing a, I'll write it as e to the power of log a. Is that alright? Right, okay. Let me write that. e to the power of log a. There it is right there. You just told me those things were equal, right? And you just tried it on your calculator. And then that's to the power of x, because that's, that's what I have in the first line. Sophie? Do we need to say let a equal that? Or do we need to put that work in the you're talking about like how I, do you mean just this? Yeah, like if you're putting, let, let, making A equal Sure. So the short answer is, um, this is actually a result which is kind of, it's a bit like Pythagoras' theorem. You proved it once, and then you can just kind of use it, right? However, we, like if I showed you guys this, I wouldn't expect you to like just know it off the top of your head, because we haven't been doing exponentials and logs all that much. Um, we haven't been doing it as long as we've been doing Pythagoras, so that's why I went and did all that working to show it, if that's okay. But you don't need to redo it every single time, just like you don't need to redo Pythagoras every time. Okay, now, why is this better? Because it is better, okay? Watch this. If I just um, take these two powers, right? Something power to a power. I can write this as e to the power of x log a. Is that okay? Those powers just multiply by each other. Now what's great about this is, I know how to differentiate this. We know how to differentiate this. We've been doing ones like this for ages, right? This, like, yeah, this is, this is just a chain rule situation, isn't it? It's e to the power of some other function, okay? So I need to do the inside, and then I need to do the outside. That's all I need to worry about, okay? So let's, let's have a go. Let's see if we can do this, okay? The inside function is that thing in the power. It's x times log a. Now, a is just a number. So log a is also just some other number. Can someone therefore tell me what's the derivative of this? Hmm. Just, uh, just one. Like if I gave you e to the power of 5x, the number out the front is 5. So the derivative of 5x is just 5. If I gave you a weird one like e to the power of pi x, I mean pi is a weird looking number, but it's still just a number, right? So the derivative of that guy would just be pi. Okay, now look carefully. I know that looks weird, but log a, like put in log 2 or log 5 or whatever, it's just another number. Do you agree? It's just a weird dressed up number. So what would the derivative of this be? Log a. There is the derivative of the inside function. Okay, what's the other part of chain rule? Times it by the original. It's the derivative of the outside function, right? The outside function, you dealt with the inside, now we do the outside. And the outside is e to the power of a thing. What happens when you differentiate e to the power of a thing? You just get back that same thing, right? Which in this case is e to the power of x log a, like so. Okay. Now, we're pretty much there. Like, we've actually done, we've actually done the differentiation. I was a bit cheeky and I didn't write the left-hand side. Um, this is not y anymore. This is the derivative of y, dy and dx. All I need to do here, just to tidy it up a teeny bit, is to remember, oops, where's my red going here? See this guy here? That's what I started with. See that? That's how I just rewrote this guy. So I'm just going to put it back to where it was before. I turned it into an E base because I knew how to deal with those bases. But now I don't need to. I can write it in a simpler way. This is just, I'll write it in the same color so you can see. 
This derivative equals, that's a to the x, what you started with. Okay, I just rewrote it in E so I could deal with it. And then I multiply it by log A, which is just a number. That's it. That's the derivative. Now, one of the lovely things about this is you can confirm it by looking at a result you already know. Think back to the derivative of e to the x. That's the common one that you know, right? Does it fit into this? Does the derivative of e to the x fit this pattern? Because e to the x is just a special version of this, right? The one where we were moving the graphs around. It's like, oh, they locked up, right? So let's just quickly think about this. If I put in e's everywhere you see a's, what would happen? This guy at the front, I'm going to write it as e to the x. What do I write here? I'm going to replace every a with an e, which looks like this, right? What is that? One. Ln e. That's log base e of e. That's just, that's just one, isn't it? Mm. It's convenient that my l's look so much like ones, okay? And that's the a, e to the x that we already know was the derivative, okay? So this is just the special version where everything kind of cancels out neatly, okay? So if you want, you can put a big box around that. Um, the derivative of any exponential is going to be this. Yes, Sorry, Sophie. Sorry, we had the x power. Mm -hmm. Did we not include that in you, that? You're talking about this x power? Yeah, and then when we had a look at that final like, result that we got, we put a to the x again. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that we were including x in that initial substitution? Yeah, yeah, we were. The, the whole thing has been switched around. If you want to think about it this way, have a look at my first line. And then my third line, do you see they're all equal to y? y equals this, oh, okay. y equals that. So I've just said, oh, that e to the x log a, let's just go back. That was nicer, actually. That was neater. It was less writing. John? The derivative of any exponential will be this. If your particular exponential is e, then you get e to the x log e, which is e to the x. Okay? And if you want, just go back to Desmos, you've still got it there, hopefully, and you can actually put in this as your derivative curve, and you'll get the same result. Okay? So is that why uh, e to the power of x is e to the power of x when you derive it? Yes. And you just showed us the long version of it. Yeah, that's exactly right. So this is why e to the x is special, because if you put in e in here, it sort of just disappears, if that makes sense. Okay? That's pretty Except we just looked at the picture of it. That's so cool.